I am honored. I gladly accept the challenge. Excellent. Now, if you reach an impasse, think only, what would Poirot do? Imagine that I am there beside you, offering counsel. It may help. So, we begin. Dr. Constantine, take her next door. Someone must have stood there and stabbed him again and again. There is something in the pocket of his pajamas. Something heavy. I did not disturb it. Egg! 115. That agrees with my calculations. The man was armed? It is bizarre. Why did he not defend himself? There is nothing more the body can tell us. I did not close the window despite the chill. I thought there might be fingerprints, and the cold, of course, helps preserve the body. Take care. There may be fingerprints. Regardez, mademoiselle. Has anything been disarranged in this compartment? No, mademoiselle. I was careful not to move the body in making my examination. A morbid fascination with the dead is not healthy, Miss Marceau. There is something in the pocket. are there, Doctor? I make it twelve wounds. One or two are so slight as to be mere scratches. On the other hand, at least three would be capable of causing death. Some wounds seem to have bled more than others. You see these two wounds, here and here. They are deep. Each cut must have severed blood vessels, and yet the edges do not gape. They have not bled as one would have expected. The murderer returned to make certain Ratchet was dead? The idea is an absurdity, of course. Even one with no medical knowledge would have been able to tell the man was already quite dead. Ratchet was already dead when those were delivered? Some little time dead. The wounds are scattered all over the torso. Yes, and you see this wound here, under the right arm near the right shoulder. Could you deliver such a blow? 
I have a pencil if you would like to try it. That won't be necessary. How do you account for it? A left-handed murderer could strike there easily. But of course, that blow was almost certainly struck with the left hand. Yet some of these blows are just as obviously right-handed. The murderer had unusually long arms? Please let us not stray into the land of Poe with his murderous apes stuffing young girls up chimneys. I know something of apes. They kill by pummeling or crushing, not whittling away at their victim. Ratchet thrashed about as he was dying? On the contrary, he lay completely composed. The bedsheets are not disarrayed at all. Tell me something about the force of the blows. Some were struck with a terrible ferocity as to drive the knife through hard belts of bone and muscle. Yet others seem to be haphazard and at random, glancing off, doing hardly any damage. Someone striking with their eyes shut? In a blind frenzy? And struck so many times with their eyes closed to make sure they had managed to hit a vital organ or two? Perhaps the killer was uncertain at first, then was overcome with a bloodlust. Or perhaps the killer tired of his exertions, weakening, yet still enjoying himself too much to leave off. Could there be two murderers? Perhaps. Some blows could have been struck by a strong man or very athletic woman. Others are weak. A frail woman, perhaps. Can you estimate the time of death? It is difficult to say exactly in these matters. The open window, the cold you understand, complicates an estimate. But I think I can say definitely that death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Good day, monsieur. At the moment, I think I'm needed elsewhere. Monsieur Poirot. The office has already heard when they were delivered. The murderer was carried to make certain life of his death. The murderer had unusually long arms. Rocket flashed about as he was dying, and the left hand murderer could easily stand so. Someone struggling with their eyes shut in a blind frenzy. So the victim was unfortunate at first, but then overcome with a bloodlust. Could there be two murderers? And that is everything I've discovered so far. We progress, mademoiselle. Now, let us see what we can learn. The wounds tell too many different stories. Oui, the matter begins to clear itself up wonderfully. The murderer was a man of great strength. He was feeble, it was a woman, it was a right-handed person, it was a left-handed person. Ah, c'est rigolo tout ça! And the victim, what does he do in all this? Does he cry out? Does he struggle? Does he defend himself? No, he awaits his doom with the greatest composure. The box of matches suggests the round one belonged to Monsieur Ratchet. I concur. The pipe cleaner and the handkerchief are good clues. Possibly. What can we learn from them? Remember the bottle I found in the suitcase? Wait, oui, a sleeping draught and the bottle half empty. It would be instructive to learn if Ratchet took his usual dosage last night. What of the residue in the tumbler? A sleeping powder, perhaps, such as that I found in the suitcase. It might explain why Monsieur Ratchet did not cry out when he was attacked. A possibility. However, in my experience, the usual dose of a sleeping draft would not be strong enough to prevent awakening if one were violently attacked. The gun was unfired. He would certainly have defended himself if he had been able. For now, it might be better if you keep the gun with you for your protection. I would not like our collaboration cut short prematurely. The broken watch tells us the time of death exactly. Very convenient, the broken watches. 1.15, well within Dr. Constantine's estimate of midnight to 2 a.m. What you say is true. The small metal statuette, it is very old and possibly quite valuable. Take it with you. Learn more of it if you can. 
Are the false teeth important? Only to one who must wear them. And why you took for yourself the false teeth of the dead man is not for Poirot to ask. But I hope they prove themselves as useful to you as they undoubtedly did to him. The footprints outside the window are important. What did they say to you? The killer may have fled the train. And gone where? Still, they must be investigated. I found the inscription REV 1318 printed on the hat band of his hat. Mm, a curious inscription indeed for the hat. I found only the cigar in the ashtray. No pipe. Certainly, this is a clue masculine. Monsieur Ratchet smokes the cigar, lighting it with a round match, and someone else, still to be determined, smokes the pipe, lighting it with a flat match. The letter H can help us find the owner of the handkerchief. A clue feminine, so dainty, and to have the letter embroidered upon it is so convenient. One cannot complain of having no clues in this case. If a man killed Ratchet... After the sociable smoke... Then the woman came in later, not noticing he was dead, and attacked him as well. Also, not noticing that she had dropped her handkerchief. Very fortunate for us that she was so unobservant. The burnt paper could be significant. What strikes you as most important? Not cigar or pipe ashes. Burnt paper. Precisamo. But the paper is impossible to read. It is possible that some of the writing on the paper can be made legible again if the scrap can be protected, flattened, and held firmly in place while the heat is applied. I will need something with which to handle the paper most delicately, two objects of metal netting that we can place in between, and a source of constant heat. Collect for me these items and we will see what we shall see. I should look for the items Monsieur Poirot needs to read the burnt scrap of paper. Sterling silver, of course. This is the wrong kind of hat frame. Think, Mademoiselle Marceau. It must be made of the wire mesh. Regardez, Mademoiselle. I've already searched it thoroughly. Quite interesting. This is the wrong kind of hat frame. Think, Mademoiselle Marceau. It must be made of the wire mesh. It's locked fast. I don't need anything else from my suitcase at the moment. Perfect.
I'll put this into my scrapbook so I can take a closer look at it later. This is the wrong kind of hat frame. Think, Mademoiselle Masso. It must be made of the wire mesh. I've already searched it thoroughly. That will do nicely. This looks like a puzzle box. Let me see if I can get it open. That isn't right. I can't seem to get the piece to move that. I don't think that... I can't seem... And now to see what was so cleverly guarded. I'll only keep this as long as I need it. I'm no thief. The door is locked. Ah, a single pipe smoker aboard and all roads lead to him. Nothing else to see in there. I won't find anything else in there. Nothing else to see in there. Regardez, mademoiselle. I won't find anything else in there. I have everything I need to read the paper. That is most pleasing. I have all the pieces. All that remains is for me to assemble them properly. The curling tongs have the burnt paper firmly but delicately in their grip. No, that isn't right. I must put the paper between them first. The paper holder is now in place. Now on to securing a heat source.
Daisy Armstrong. C'est ça. I now know the real name of the dead man. And I know why he had to leave America. Monsieur Poirot, I have documented that case in my scrapbook. I remember where the case. Ten years ago, Colonel... And still more tragedy was to follow. The police refused to believe the hysterical denials of the poor girl, hoping she might lead them to Cassetti. In a fit of despair, the poor girl threw herself from a window and was killed. It was proved afterwards that she was absolutely innocent of any complicity in the crime. Cassetti was the man, there can be no doubt. He had used the same methods in the past. Hired men down on their luck to do the dangerous work, but taking most of the ransom for himself, and always killing the victim if the police were closing in. He had many enemies, that one. I cannot regret that he is dead. I agree with you, mademoiselle. Still, it is not necessary that he should be killed aboard one of our trains. There are other places. Indeed. The investigation continues. And we progress, no? And now is the time for the assembling of the evidence. Collect all passports, gather information about our suspects, seek out any clues, follow every possible trail. Goodness, it seems to have gotten extremely cold in here. Mademoiselle, the engineer has just informed me. A rock from the avalanche, it struck the undercarriage of the coal tender. The pipe that carries the steam that heats the train is damaged. It must be repaired, or we will all freeze to death. Could this be coincidence? Either way, I'd better look into it immediately. <laughs> 